communicating design, 750 first year engineering students, a writer in residence, and an artist in residence. By Sarah Lockwood and Marianne Egremont of the Schulich School of Engineering, University of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Our engineering design and communications course is a full year course for approximately 750 first year students. We have 32 teaching assistants and six instructors, and we work with real world open ended design problem process. We deal with all three modes of transmission and communication, oral, written, and visual, and we give instructions in all three areas. We see communication as essential for design, especially engineering design. Uh, we deal with all three areas of communication. In terms of oral communication, all of our projects are done on a small group basis. The basic unit of the course is a group of four students working on a single project. Uh, this was an example on inclusive design. Um, all designs must be negotiated. Uh, if a student has a good idea, they need to present it to their group, they need to convince their group that this is the way to go, for instance. We do also a number of larger group discussions on sort of three levels. The, the most basic of those levels is an individual presentation to the group. Each semester, students do a one or two minute presentation on an aspect of design or engineering science. These one or two minute engineer presentations uh, are not permitted presentation software of any form. You're allowed a model or a diagram, but the emphasis is on oral communication to a group. Towards the end of first semester, students begin working with other groups. So two or three or four groups will work together on a single project. Uh, in first semester, what will happen is if you're designing, for instance, uh, sustainable housing, each group would take a different aspect of the house. And while they would design their own aspect and only their own aspect, they would have to collaborate to see how the systems fit together. In second semester, we move to large group collaboration. The students are still split into their groups of four, but now each group of four takes a different aspect of a single project. So one group might take budgeting, one group might take materials, one group might take project management and help keep the other teams on course. This then increases the level of complexity in terms of communication because now you have to deal with four or five or six or seven other groups and come up with a single project. We use, in order to regulate this sort of large group communication, a team contract where we lay out the essential elements for the project. In this example, you can see the students have given us their purpose, their team roles, including evaluating their own strengths and weaknesses, who does what well, and we're going to uh, a lot work based on that. Uh, their policy on communication and uh, their timetables and meeting schedule. The contract would then go on to agree on what happens if someone doesn't do their work or how to deal with conflict. Uh, team contracts must be signed by each member of the group to show that everyone does agree to work on the same base rules. We also do a number of written communication documents. We do a large amount of technical writing. Uh, all technical writing documents are written by the group. There are no individual papers, so students learn to collaborate on written communication as well. Uh, every project has a presentation, and every project requires some kind of presentation document. And so we're really working here on writing short pieces and documenting interesting issues. Uh, some projects have design transfer specifications where students write down instructions on how to do whatever it is they've just done. These are evaluated by other students, the process is anonymous, who then take the instructions and without ever seeing the original model, attempt to build that model. Um, and we find that this gives students a very sort of strong sense of how well they are communicating because it's hard to build something you've never seen before. And if you can explain it clearly, then that's usually a good indication that you're writing clearly. We use interim reports in most report in most projects rather um, because they require students to plan their designs rather than just sort of go with, hey, this was a good idea, let's go there. Uh, interim reports sort of encourage students to come up with three or four ideas and then to evaluate which one is the best one for the project. Every project has a final report where they evaluate what worked, what didn't, what would they do differently. This is the introduction for a project from the sustainable housing uh, ideas on water heaters. Um, students will then give us an introduction, they'll say this is sort of what it normally looks like, and then they'll present a proof of concept, this is what we do differently, and then usually their experimentation, how they tested to see whether or not it was a good idea. Because this is an engineering course, they always present their results, usually graphed or charted, 
and you can see here they've also shown how their project interacts with the other three projects being done for the sustainable house. We do do written communication uh, in terms of personal writing, uh, narrative writing, what worked well, what, work, what didn't work well, um, reflective writing, this is some reflection on a font assignment, what did we do, what didn't we do, what, what would we, what I do differently. Um, we use poetry on occasion to encourage thinking about writing in terms of the design process, what pieces work best. In this case, it's haiku, which is a very, very structured form. The visual communications part of the course uh, exists in the form of uh, quick sketches and logbooks that are done during the lecture time and uh, assignments that take a little bit longer uh, care uh, in terms of the drawing. So sketches that you might see in the logbooks of the students are basic shapes or build build-ups of basic shapes. Typically students are taught to draw, start with a drawing envelope and uh, draw all their drawings in isometric for the first semester and then we move on from there. Technical drawing part revisited is referring to the fact that we do engineering drafting but not as uh, thorough as was done in the past because computer programs are very good at doing the final detailing of, of uh, drawings. We basically explore drawing as a means of communication and as a means of exploring new ideas. In this uh, assignment, which I entitled Gesamtkunstwerk, I talked about uh, the designed object as a whole. So students were asked to draw a skateboard in isometric and an accompanying orthographic, but then also to design the artwork that goes on the bottom of the skateboard to uh, consider the user of this uh, object. We then continued with the skateboard and section one of the wheels and then the students were asked to bring in some of their engineering concept knowledge from other courses. So what path does a point on the outer edge of the wheel make if the wheel is traveling at a constant velocity? And what kind of forces could you expect if somebody were to stand on the skateboard? And students were asked to do this uh, using color. In this assignment, students were asked to find two objects, one where form follows function and one where form does not follow function. And one of our Chinese students found a nice example in language where a character for middle in Chinese is seen at the top and form follows function clearly in that example. For a design style analysis, we look at the history of design in terms of architecture and uh, other design styles that uh, crop up in uh, the history of design. In this case, a student looked at Italian futurism but always uh, students are asked to bring in knowledge from other courses, so this student uh, analyzed some of the structural components of the building. This student also looked at design style analysis, in this case an arts and crafts lamp, and again brought in um, engineering knowledge from other courses to analyze the base and the glass and the light. In the golden section assignment, look at design and natural proportions. One student managed to find the golden ratio in a rap song, a song by Eminem, and uh, counted out all the beats and found that the proportional ratio was uh, in the song. In this assignment, students were asked to look at their favorite two minutes of a movie or a sports game. In this case, a student looked at an ice hockey game, and uh, the ribbons that you can see at the top are the movements that some of the players make on the ice. And at the bottom, you can see a top view or a plan, uh, an orthographic plan view. In this example, students showed, uh, again, movement of players on an American football field. And uh, the bottom image shows a top view of that movement. Biomimicry is uh, an assignment we do on a yearly basis where students are asked to uh, try to come up with ideas that are abstracted from uh, things that occur in nature. This student looked at blood flow in veins and heat exchange and used the idea for uh, a system in a house. This uh, final example, and we have many different drawing assignments that we uh, rotate on a year-to-year -year basis or, or every other year. Um, in this assignment, students were asked to look at their favorite piece of architecture and unwrap the building, basically. So if I were to cut this out and glue it back together, I would get back to Calatrava's turning torso in Malmo, Sweden. And uh, this is also a very nice, very complex example of uh, one of the students' favorite buildings. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it.